All right, here we go. Today, we're going to be working on this beautiful website. We're going to be generating some blog posts with a script and adding in these tag links, all automatically generated. So it's going to go from looking on the left to looking on the right. And the script is just this one that I have commented out here. We're going to go through that now. So what it looks like right now, we're using ASCII doc. And what we want to do is um, basically grab these post files that are here. We can have a look at one of them. They look like, like this inside. So they've got a header, um, just a paragraph and then tags at the bottom. This is you know, what you would expect from any kind of blog post. And we're going to join them together into one file called posts, which is then going to be actually um, put into this index file, which I have here. So this is the main page. So we've got, yeah, my name is Dylan Falconer, blah, 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 some links, etc. And at the bottom here, we've got this include posts.adoc. So right now, that's actually opened on this right hand buffer over here. And it's empty. So what we're going to do is progressively fill it up step by step with these commands up here. First one, pretty simple. We want to find all the posts. And then we want to put them together. Now this is actually going to just give us a list of the posts, which is not that useful in and of itself in the website, but it will be very useful in a second. Um, so the reason that I use find is because it gives us the relative path that is including this source slash posts, which is really nice. And it does every, it outputs everything onto a new line, which is cool. Don't have to do any futzing around or use awk or anything if we use du. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but it isn't sorted. So that's why the next command is sort. So dash R is just reverse. And we want to reverse it because it's a blog. So we want the first post to be at the top, or rather the, the most recent post to be at the top. Cool. So that's pretty good so far. We've got the titles and everything, but we don't actually have any content of the files. So that's what we're going to use xargs for. xargs or zargs, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but this thing is really cool. If you pass it a list of files, it will perform commands on those files. So in this case, we use xargs with the file names, and then we use sed, which is going to put them all together and also run this sed command on them, which is quite nice. So this one is we want to grab any line that starts with tags and then a colon like that. And we want to do a search and replace. And I'm going to use these pipes instead of slashes as much as I can, because you can do that with said. Um, but for some reason, you can't do it at the beginning here. This has to be slashes for whatever reason. Now we're going to search for everything on that line, which is what this is. And the parentheses are going to capture it so we can use it later. Another pipe. Now we just print out everything on that line which is the first capture group, backslash one. Now we just want to add a new line, backslash n, and then the pipe. And we only want to do it once per line, so we don't need any flags. Cool. Now let's have a look and see what that does. All right. That's nice. So we've got everything concatenated, which is looking good. And it's actually showing up on the page pretty nicely. But you can see. If we look at these tags, there's no links or anything, and um, they don't do anything. So it's kind of useless, unless you just want to do a control F on the page, but that's no good. Who wants to do that? All right. So what we want to do is start generating these tags. So you might notice um, this first list of tags actually has a tag with a space in it, and that will cause all kinds of problems. You don't really want to have have that so that that's why the first command that we're going to use here is another set 
and we're going to replace the spaces with dashes. So the way we do that is we find the tags line again. So it only operates on that tags line. And then, sorry, and then we, um, we want to grab basically uh, search and replace, and we want to grab anything that isn't the colon or the comma, because that's what's at the end of each word, and it's also at the end of tags. And then we want to grab a space, and that's it. So we know that if there's a space, and before the space, there is a colon or a comma, then that's going to be the space in between tags or the space in between the tag words. That's not what we want. So we want the spaces inside a singular tag, which this should give us. Then we want to just do a backslash one to print that capture group out. And I actually missed something there. <clears throat> um, backslash one dash, that's it. And we want to make sure we can do it multiple times per line. So that's the G option, I'm pretty sure. And uh, that will handle that. So now you can see at the top here, this dog walk has a hyphen. Very cool. Now if we look at the page again, it's in the page. Nice. Cool. Now there's still no links. So that's what we're going to start putting in now. Another set command. Said dash E, by the way, just means use extended regular expressions. And I tried to get this working using just like old school regex, but it was a real pain. And I don't really see any reason to do that except for fun. And it wasn't that fun after a while. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look for each tag word. And then we're going to replace that with a link. And then put it put the word in that link, if that makes sense. So the ASCII doc, um, the ASCII doc tags look like this and then you write where you want it to go. So in this case, tag slash tag name dot HTML. And then in here you put the word. So it would be like tag name. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. So let's get cracking with that one. I might actually just copy it from up here because it's a bit of a pain to write, but I'll go through it and I don't want to mess it up too much. So once again, we grab the line with tags then we do a search and replace and we're looking for a space. And then the first capture group is anything that is not a comma and then repeated. So that's going to be space and then letters basically. And then it ends at, or well, the second capture group is a comma or, and I had to actually escape this pipe here because I'm using it as an or symbol. And I'm also using it as the separator between the search and replace. Um, or this dollar sign, dollar sign means end of line. So it's either going to be ending at a comma or ending at the end of the line. And then we want to replace it with, and I've added this backslash L, which is just make it all lowercase. Um, you don't have to do this. I just thought that it would be nice to have it lowercase in the, in the link. And then we just put link tag slash. And then once again, we use this backslash one to grab the first capture group .html and then backslash one for the word and then G so it can operate multiple times per line. Now let's have a look at this and hover over a link over here, look down the bottom. Very nice. So that's pretty much working and this is what it looks like. Um, now in my script, I've actually got one more line here, which is just going to add a link to the tag slash index.html. So let's just go through that. Um, it's pretty similar, but in this case, we actually just want to do a search in a place and find anything that starts with tags and then replace it with a link to tags. And now this could be problematic. If you have a uh, paragraph that starts with tags, this will actually match that. So I, I'm thinking about changing this later, but for right now, uh, it should run pretty well. There we go. And no, that's not what I want. <clears throat> and there we go. So link to tags doesn't actually have a page yet. That's going to be for a future video. We're going to go through how to generate the tags from the blog posts using some kind of script like this. 
So that's going to be pretty fun. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful and a good indicator of what kind of stuff you can do with just some simple Linux commands. Yeah, catch ya.